great core team with Ruben here who I'll introduce in a moment. Uh, we'll go through a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. That echo is something that you're going to learn more about. Well, most of the reason why you're here. We're actually um, doing a live hangout on air right now of this event currently. So anything you say can and will be recorded. <laughs> so housekeeping stuff again. Thank you for coming. Um, Ruben is initially going to talk about the work from home day story. Um, it all started several months ago with the National Social Good Summit. We will then um, have Elizabeth come up, who's an expert in telecommuting, and give lots of background and data and helpful hints as far as telecommuting. Then we have the lovely Ifat Cohen, our G plus go to gal, who is going to give all the information that we're trying to know about the plus coming up. Um, then you're going to get to hear my name and voice again for about 15 minutes, and I'm going to tell you about Google Apps for Business and the amazing productivity and collaboration tools that they are. And then finally, we um, are hoping that our CTO uh, here in Austin is going to be able to come in last minute and give a live case study, but he did call a little bit before and say he may have a fire that he needs to put out. So we may give you a summarized third person case study. Yep. And then finally, uh, Jason Selly has so wonderfully provided lunch for us afterwards. Lunch will be just around this corner, actually behind that garage door. Um, and if you need to use the restroom at any time, you just go out here uh, to the glass wall, take a right, and the restrooms will be on your right. There's some beverages back there. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce <coughs> Mr. Ruben Cantu, who is the instrumental individual in this whole program. Yes. Guys, I'm very humbled to be here to join us today. Uh, I want to make sure I recognize Rick Steven Ogilvy. There you go. That's my co-founder over there. So uh, while I'm up here, I didn't do this on my own. So uh, we actually started, and I don't know who uh, here was able to attend the social event summit that we had in September. It was a great event. I see some familiar faces. Carl, thank you very much for showing up again. And um, Dana. Uh, Ultimately, what we came out from that event was that we actually could do something. So we went back to the lab, we started working on this, and uh, this is what you see is the first event of a series of three events that we're going to be putting on in the next, I guess, three months or next eight weeks. Um, this is uh, getting you guys ready for what we are putting together in February, the Work From Home program. Uh, it's a work from home day where we're asking the city, the community, businesses, everyone who's involved to try to work from home one day, see what that does to our air quality, see what that does to our traffic congestion. So uh, for everyone who has taken the time uh, to be here, I think you will find it very valuable for what we've got to offer. And more importantly, also um, get some insight on the business side from people like Elizabeth. So I would like to introduce Elizabeth but is there anything uh, before I do sorry that I'm missing? Uh, Can you remember anything else? Um, we're hoping to take 10,000 cars off the road. So, yes. Uh, encouraging your friends to work from home on that day. Is so, for the people who didn't hear that, we're trying to encourage 10,000 cars to get off the road. I think this is a small number in comparison to the whole population. We say, well, what kind of impact will that really make? Our, our whole goal is to create a snowball effect. So, if we can win here, hopefully it'll become part of the culture at Austin. So, you're part of something very new that we're trying, and it hopefully is very good, very exciting to be part of Austin. So, with that being said, I would like to introduce Elizabeth Fritch, who has been, uh, I guess, a pivotal person to help communities and, and organizations, enterprises start work from home programs in their own companies. Uh, Telecommuting is her subject matter, uh, and she's the author and speaker. So, uh, for the two, she's going to share with us uh, what the benefits are. Great. If you just do view slideshow, it'll be up there. We tested it out. So you all get to see my cute scooter. I'm going to grab a stool, so I'm not scooting in this talk. Although that may be entertaining and distracting from what I'm trying to do, right? Alright, is this the clicker? Yep. Is this the clicker? So I get 15 minutes this morning on the rise and house of telecommuting. And so just you know um, a little bit of my background. Um, 
I'm here representing Thrival School. I'm actually really excited because I just bootstrapped this company in two weeks. Um, and it was actually an evolution of a previous company I've run for the last 10 years where um, our services are really about in the business resiliency category. And so just a little quick bit of my story. I am 20 years young, which I won't feel like I'm in my 40s, thank you very much, in the field of business resilience and leadership development. I totally will fess up. I'm a recovering chemical engineer. I did labor under the illusion of illusion that you can engineer humanity for the first half of my career. Um, and I've been a consultant my whole life, which some people might think is bad, but for someone like me who loves variety, if you love industry, you love running for government, you love military, for someone with ADD, it is a dream come true, let me tell you. Um, and just, you know, I have a bunch of books coming out, my first one coming out this year. My soon-to-be publisher would murder me for even showing you these book covers, because when they looked at them, they said, you are an engineer, never design a book cover again. But at least, you know, there's going to be three books coming out called the Empowerment Series on Leadership, and it's all about doing things like this, how do you get these social changes. So without further ado, since we have speed dating, we're doing 15 minutes here, let's go to what I call the why. So first and foremost, um, as a whole in the industry and business, we are what I call over-invested in real estate. So what that means, and there's some interesting statistics out there, but I like to use BOMAs, on an average day, the average workspace, and I don't care if you're a pharmaceutical company, a high tech company, a business company, a service company, your offices are typically empty 70% of the time. That's the average across all industry. And so you are paying for real estate, millions and millions of dollars of real estate. And in this down economy, um, I had one CEO say it's butts or cubes, and that's actually true. You are having to choose between paying the real estate bill or laying people off. And that's not what we want to do as a business. So the number one why for me when I go out and talk to companies is rework your workspace, get some work from home, and then you can invest in your people instead of your buildings. Uh, the second one and second reason why this has gone from zero to 100 miles an hour is the economy. Um, as most of you know, all of us, no matter what business we were in, were impacted by the last three years. And so you may not be aware that the average person sitting in an office costs a company five to twenty thousand dollars a person. And that's like the cost that's based on the utilities, the real estate, the space they keep up, your leasing, all that other good stuff. And as you know, has anybody's water, power, or material bill gone down in the last year or two? It has not. And so again, um, the economy is forcing companies to really put a huge emphasis on how do we survive, and not just survive, but thrive with this kind of environment. So number three, and not to be stereotypical, but I loved this picture, so I cannot resist putting it up here for you. Um, the why of you, why you have people work from home, there are huge, and it's been studied, there's data out there, health benefits to working from home. And so I will tell you, every additional hour you spend in a car increases your chance of being overweight by 6%. So if you have a one-hour commute, that's 6%. If you have a two-hour commute, that's 12%, and on and on and on. I know people who have three-plus-hour commutes because they live in beautiful areas out on the lake and drive into downtown every day. Um, but unfortunately, reality is you get heavier and heavier because when you're in the car, what are you not doing? And the other thing is, when you're in the car, what are, you not, what are you eating or not eating? You know, it's kind of healthy food, you know, eating a salad in the car is kind of hard thing to do. Um, and then you have people like me. Do you really want me in a boot driving on both pack in rush hour traffic with you like I just didn't get here? Not a good thing. The second part of the health issue, so how many of you are aware that we have some air quality issues already here in Austin, Texas, that we are very close to being bumped into what's called as non-attainment for air quality? So how many? I just want to see. So good. I've got an audience who's like really aware. So you know if our air quality goes south, our health is going to go south with it. And why? Because that stuff that comes out of your tailpipe is amazingly respirable. It not only goes into your lungs, it can actually absorb into your bloodstream. They've actually studied why runners have heart attacks. 
And they've actually shown that runners who run in polluted cities have targeting of the arteries just like they stack with a happy pile of lard, um, just like overweight people do, because that goes in and it causes an inflammation. So we want to work more people from home because Austin is doubling its population. And it's doubling it within the span of decades. And I don't know if you've looked at the roads lately, but can you imagine what your one-hour commute is going to look like on your from now? 50,000 and 100,000 people die each year from air pollution. Um, mold sources are a big part of outdoor air pollution. So health, 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 really important. The next reason why you want to do this is what I call the happy factor. So how many of you actually have read the study that shows that happy people are higher in productivity? How many of you <coughs> saw the study that came out that said optimists make more money and are more successful in their careers than pessimists? Okay. So here's the truth. We've had remote work with us, uh, working from home with us for over a decade now, really robustly with a lot of companies. The studies show they are happier. They are more productive. Well-designed programs have more productive employees. I myself, um, in 1995, got hired in the state of Texas and was told, um, welcome to your job. And I said, where are my employees? And they told me I had a dozen to supervise. And they said, oh, they're all over the state. You're here in Austin, and they're in every city in Texas. And so what I really got, though, was my employees were super happy being remote. In fact, they hated coming to the main office. They loved having their quality of life. They loved being out there. They loved the freedom. Um, and let me tell you, we're going to talk about the Gen Ys. Um, because a lot of you with aging populations, I don't know if you looked at your demographics, but if you are not tracking the age of your company, you are missing a key thing that if you are aging and you want to get Gen Y in, you have the last big Y, okay? The new workforce, if you chain them to an office, you're about to be able to work in a cafe one, collaborate with another, and move here and move there, and that keeps happy. I have lots of Gen Ys I've had in my companies. And they do, they like ultimate freedom. And so my last why I always give you is, if you really do want to thrive as a business in the next decade, you'd better be doing more work and other things because you're going to miss the whole Gen Y. They're going to go to the companies that are like the cool companies that are sitting So I'm going to give you some quick steps on the how. And then I'm going to tell you we are speed dating, so, um, but I have a promise at the end of it that I told Ruben I will offer to you all here if you want to go forward with this. So the seven steps. Number one is that you make the case. And so doing it out of the survey to see how many people are already doing it. Looking at how you work. Doing what we call a bed check and saying and showing that your offices are 30% of the already, so we might as well capitalize on it. All of those things help build the case. And I put a little caveat in here on the emotional aspect. I will tell you the number one reason businesses don't do this is fear. Okay? And so um, when I get hired in, like the program tools, I give those away to my clients. I don't need to charge them for those. What they're paying me for is this, is to get the culture change in there. And so you really make sure that you have looked at like what people are most afraid of and then you have a response to it. Um, because you're going to have all sorts of personalities. Some people don't care, some people want to know what it is, and others are just like, how is this going to make my life miserable or happy? Step two is your fan base. These are not lone soldier initiatives. I have some clients I've gotten these done in a year. I have some who are in five plus years, but it all takes a while to the inside the organization to get it moving. Now, the design phase, and you Google, so I'm going to spend very little time on this. Tools are essential. I will tell you these programs live and die on IT and collaboration, ability to stay connected over distance. Four, this is the step that most companies shirk on. They don't train their middle managers nor their workers before they go home on how to do it right. They just send them home. So do not skip this step. It's essential. Step five. Crawl before you walk. I have companies that all of a sudden just make a decision and suddenly spend 30 to 40% of the workforce home for more than three or four days a week. And then they, a year later, come back and go, well, listen, they're failed miserably. And I'm like, yeah, one thing would have been a good start for you know, X percentage of this group. You know, like, don't be afraid to let it take a little bit longer because then you're going to work out the kinks. And by the time you roll it out to everyone, it will go really smoothly. So um, this is from Jen Myers. You have Step six, build your case. 
And I always say, this is where the engineer walk in me is, get the data, publish the data, show the data, my measure productivity, satisfaction, all those other good things for my clients, and it really, really helps communicate that. And then last, make it a system. It's not random, spend the money, have the tools, automate it, so it's just so easy. Complex systems and bureaucracies don't work, and like I said, um, at the end of the day, um, if it's too complex, no one will do it. So I'm going to leave you with one little box. It's my favorite quote. You sit there and think, can you do it or not? And report had it right when you think you can or you can't. All right. So my little offer at the end, Ruben, because I'm just finishing up. I told Ruben that anyone who participated in this was interested, I actually do my Get Started Go Mobile training. That's going to include a little packet and samples of like how to do an assessment, how to do all that kind of stuff. And we'll do that as a webinar. So you call in from your office, and that's my gift to the things. I'm so excited. And it was brilliant that they did one day. That's why it's going to work great. So thank you for your time. Yes, I know. Uh, to me, when we initially came up with the concept, we said that we were trying to implement a work with program over the next six months. I was like, that's crazy now. As a lean entrepreneur, if you live with a lean methodology, focus on really small steps. So recall, this is a, a work from home day on February is our minimum viable product. Figure out how well that did, and if we can have success with that, then we'll extrapolate and expand it a bit more. Now, moving on, uh, just so everyone knows the timeline of, uh, of this actual campaign, today's our first event. February 8th is our work from home day. So we want you to go out and spread the word to everyone else who's uh, within earshot of you and your influence the circle, social media, and offline methods, and even through Google Plus, and uh, tell them what we're doing and what's going on. We're going to document as much as we can for this day. And then what we're going to do is, uh, after we collect all the data from the people who participated, the businesses, individuals, and uh, just community organizations, we're going to deliver those results at our soft event on March 10th. Uh, and therefore, we'll have another summit as we did in September, and uh, we're going to open up registration and have the whole community come together and see what we can continue doing through this method of having community action and global impact. Now, moving forward with the program, I want to introduce, oh, oh, Matt Kate. Matt Kate. Thanks, Herman. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Uh, I actually want to introduce another Googler here. Uh, can't get enough of us in here. This is Cody Drillian coming up here. Cody Julian has been with Google for a little over two years. He is a Google Plus expert, he's a Google Plus community manager, um, currently working on a team of really awesome Googlers just promoting Google Plus and working with really amazing evangelists like the bot. So let me introduce Cody Julian. Perfect. Thanks, Kate. Um, so quickly, I want to actually first, how's everyone doing? <laughs> Great. Good. Great. Excited to be at Google. Yes. Has anyone been to this office before? Welcome back for those of you that haven't. Those of you um, uh, that have not been here before, uh, it's a fantastic place, as you can tell. It's just like an able office in North Boston. Um, we like to think that, uh, that it's one of the best places to work in town. And um, we're tremendously excited to have you guys here and to have the support from Eva, Ruben, and Elizabeth. Um, so thanks for being here. Um, I want to take a quick second and sort of tell you guys a little bit about what my team does here. Um, as Kate mentioned, I work on a Google Plus team. We actually have uh, 25 different teams scattered around the country, and our goal is to sort of evangelize uh, and get people on board with Google Plus. So both for yourselves as individual users, uh, and for those of you that have companies or that are representing a company, uh, for those companies as well. Um, so I want to introduce my team back in the back. You guys can just wave. We have Haley and Katie and uh, Ash, and we're missing uh, we're missing Haley. So Whitney um, and Katie will be floating around in, in a second. Um, we will be floating around after this session, so during lunch. So if you guys have any specific questions about Google Plus that you thought maybe doesn't cover, um, then feel free to find us. Um, it's kind of a joke today. You can find us by looking for the people with the colored pants. Um, you probably noticed we all have different colored pants on today. Um, that was somewhat intentional, uh, so it should be easy to find us. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Ifat Cohen. Um, she is uh, does not work for Google, but we are so, so excited to have her. 
Um, she is a, a Google Plus evangelist of sorts and uh, has sort of branded herself as the G Plus go to gal. Um, she has over 38,000 followers on the platform, and so she's a tremendous resource. And I think she has a great presentation for you guys today. So, uh, so please help me welcome you, Fatwa. Thanks. Um, and I'm going to talk about business, uh, Google Plus Hangout as a business tool. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I've been using Google Plus since it launched in beta. And um, actually, I really stuck on its social media. I was lousy in Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. Nothing happened there for me. And um, when Google for, uh, Plus first launched, it just felt like a family. And it felt like, you know, we are people who connected based on passion. So we had stuff to talk about even though we weren't a family. And the relationship just deepened and deepened. And when Google uh, created Hangout, now we were meeting face to face and doing all this cool stuff that I'll show you. And that really built the relationship and deepened them to the point where now people are flying all over the world to meet each other face to face because they feel so close to each other. So there's an entire new culture on Google Plus. And I, if you're not on there, I suggest you jump on it. Um, so this is a little bit about myself. Um, that's my profile if you want to connect with me on Google Plus. I have um, also a website where I host all my Hangouts. I'm a Hangout host. I do weekly host, uh, Hangout shows. I interview people like um, TJ Marchetti, the vice president of Walt Disney, uh, Mashable, Samsung, um, different businesses, different uh, people from Google Plus, like Mike Elgin, Sarah Hill, Daria Musk, that you'll see in the videos. And um, I do them weekly on Thursdays, and they create brand recognition. And so in my membership club, it's free, but there are over 30 free videos to help you get started in Google Plus. Like everything you need from circling and events and everything else. So you're welcome to that. And this is what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about what are Hangouts, uh, why should you as a business person, uh, business owner should care, and I think Elizabeth already covered that. <laughs> uh, we're going to dive into a live demo, and then if you're going to use Hangouts, what will your future be like? So before we start, <laughs> do this quickly. Download Chrome. There are so many applications that uh, people are developing. It's an open source. People are developing apps for uh, Hangouts. And you can only use them in Chrome. Most of them work better in Chrome. And some don't work at all in IE and Firefox. So the beautiful part about Google Hangouts is that it's massive technology. If you think about it, it's a million people. Google has, what, billion users all over the world, and they can all do a free video chat, 10 people, broadcast it on YouTube like we are doing now, and, um, and have it also recorded on YouTube. So it's massive technology, but Google makes it so easy, and it makes the technology disappear. And so let's see Hangouts in real life. Let's hope the sound works. <laughs> Hold on. It's two screens, so it's like, where's the most? In the beginning, people were using it to just, well, hang out. But then someone had the idea to play a concert and hang out. And someone else had the idea to take people on a photo walk and hang out. And all of a sudden, people were cooking, dog training, learning to draw, stargazing, stretching, pinching cylinder heads, tying the knot, visiting museums, doing whatever this guy's doing, and some other stuff. All while hanging out. Oh, I can see your dick. That's how you guys do that. Maybe you have an idea for hanging out you want to broadcast to the world. They love these guys. Or maybe you just want to catch up with the people who know you best. Either way, it doesn't cost a thing. And it's easy. Just click the hangout button in Gmail or Google Plus. So. Ruben, I'm not a Mac person. <laughs> Where's the presentation? 
Awesome, thank you. Okay. And action. Yeah, no. This is why you need the technology to disappear. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So Hangouts are a free person, a free 10 person video chat. Um, it gives you the ability to share your screen, to do real time document collaboration. You can play games together, regardless of where you are. You can hang out on YouTube as a group, and you can integrate apps, and you can do it from anything. You can do it from your PC, from your Mac, from your mobile, from your cell phone, from your tablet, anywhere you are that has internet connection, you can use Hangouts. Hangouts on Air are the same thing as Hangouts, but it also allows you to embed the Hangout and broadcast it on YouTube live while you're doing it. So what this means, if you're business owners and 80% of your efforts are marketing, is that now you have your own TV tower. You have a 10-man media truck that you can use to broadcast your marketing message to the world. No filters, no people in between, just you and your customers and your peers. So why should you care? First thing is the cost savings, like Elizabeth was saying. Travel, commute, video teleconferencing, software packages. If you buy Skype and you want more than one person, if you buy a Microsoft Office, and Kate will talk about that later, all those cost savings, that's why they're increasing your bottom line. You can increase efficiency. You meet face-to-face -face with anyone, anywhere. So you can be working in a coffee shop or in a park on your tablet doing Google Docs, still face-to-face -face with 10 people. And because it's Google Apps, Kate will show you, you'll never lose a document, and the privacy is wonderful. And Kate will show you. So, and you increase collaboration. So it's real-time collaboration on the same document from multiple devices. So if you really integrate Google Hangouts, there's a lot of videos. If you really integrate Google Hangouts into your business, it might, your business might look like this, your meetings. Let's see. Can we get there? So yeah, I think we're good. I think that about wraps it up. So great. I'll send a follow up email. I don't. There's nothing much to follow up on. So I, well, we, we should regroup. We just regrouped. This is the regrouping. <laughs> cool. I'll you later. You're pinging me now. What do you want to think about? Next steps. There are no next steps. We just we just solved it. Yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. Okay. So, okay, so let's dive in. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to start a hangout right here and I'll show you uh, the interface and how that works. So, to do that, I'm going to go into Ruben's account. Ruben has to help me with this. I need logging into my. What are you trying to do? Start a hangout. Okay. Sorry, oh, let's just go there. So we can actually join the hangout on um, Okay, so um, can you make it smaller? Where is your other bar? Okay, so this is your Google Plus page when you start. This one? There we go, okay. So this is your home page if you are in Google+. And there are three ways to start a Hangout from right just this screen. You have start a Hangout here. You can start an individual Hangout with any person who has a little camera icon right there. <coughs> or you can start a Hangout from here. Now you can also start Hangouts from your Gmail. You can start Hangouts from Calendar. You can start Hangouts from your mobile phone. So today we're only going to do Google+. In the Hangout tab, you can join existing Hangouts. You can view Hangouts on air that are happening right now, and you can also search for Hangouts, um, public Hangouts. So let's start a Hangout. Can you adjust your microphone? Sorry, I wasn't talking to it. <laughs> when you start a Hangout, there are different options to invite people. You can click on their icon and invite them. And Elijah is here, right? Elijah, can I invite you? Where are you? Is there? Okay. So as it's here, you can click on their um, icon, you can type their name, and when you come here and you start like a regular hangout, you can invite circles, 
extended circles and the public. Let's talk about circles just for a second because it's important for Hangouts. You can divide, you can, you can think about circles the same, thing, the same way you think about circles in your own life. You have your circle of friends, you have your coworkers, you have your vendors, you have your clients. If you go out on town, right, with your friends, your coworkers will never find out about it because they're not the same circle. So the same thing happens exactly on Google+. Plus. If you put someone in a circle and you share something just with that circle, no one on the planet will know except these people in the circle. And even if they have the direct link to that post, they won't be able to see it. They get a 404. Sure. Where is it? Oh, I haven't, I haven't started yet. I didn't invite him yet, but let's do that. So you can type a name. Is it just one? Yeah. Or actually, second. Okay. Um, if you start your profile, don't be a blue head. That's what we call them. Don't be blue heads. <laughs> Put a picture up there so people know who you are. So you can invite people like that, type their name, um, and then you can also invite them by phone. So let's say you are working with someone and you need to have them on the Hangout, but they don't have, they're not available on video. You can call them. So what will happen is, you just enter their phone number, and you add them to the Hangout. And you have my phone number right there, right? Yes, OK. And then if you click here, this will be on air. It will be broadcasted and recorded on YouTube. If you don't, this is a private Hangout just between these three people. Also, I want to tell you, if you uh, choose public from here, like this, this will be available to anyone in the planet. So if you're doing office hours, for example, and you don't know who your clients might be, you might want to start a public Hangout. And just promote it on your website or in your any of your social media um, outlets, and let people join you in the Hangout. And you'll be surprised who you might meet. And then you just click Hangout. So when you do that, I invited the phone number, my phone. So it's calling me. I'm going to answer. And now I'm on a Hangout on my phone. <laughs> If you have meetings, if you need someone to join and hang out, but you don't really need to see their face, then you can call them on the phone from wherever you are. You cannot do that on Hangouts on Air, only on private Hangouts. So let's look at this screen. What do we have here? We have the chat. That's this one, right? Okay. So the chat, so when you have 10 people right here, you see Elijah, you see Steven, you see me, we can have 10 people here from all over, from their mobile, from anywhere they are. Sometimes, let's say Steven and I are in a conversation and Elijah wanna say something, instead of interrupting, he can just chat right here. And he can, this is a good place also to put any links. If you wanna tell someone, hey, look at something, this is a good place to send a URL instead of trying to have them find a website. Next, you have, these are all your applications. You can add any application that you want. If you click on this one, you'll see more applications that are available, and you can add apps. And there are plenty of apps. People play games, people play trivia, watch YouTube, Google Effects, and all that other stuff. Explore. It's not going to break your computer. But that's why um, Chrome is important, because some of these apps are not going to work in Internet Explorer. Uh, the next one is Screen Share. So you can, and Katie's going to cover that a little bit more. I'm just going to show you for a second. That's who? That's me? Basically, when you click on screen share, you can choose whatever window you want on your desktop and share that. And it's not going to be shown here, so I'm going to cancel it. I'm not just, um, finding my... Kate will dive into that a little bit more. Um, next one, Google Docs. This allows you to share, to create notes. So basically, let's say you have a meeting and you have someone who takes notes. You can take notes right here, create notes. Or you can start, um, you can use a document, an existing document that you already have. When you click create notes, it's going to alert you that everyone on the Hangout is going to have your email address because they're going to be sharing that same document with you. This will be saved in Drive for later use. So this is OK. You can remove permissions later on. And you can also create a sketchpad and just draw things. 
YouTube app is really amazing. This is fascinating. Because what it does, it allows everyone at the same time to watch the same video. If I'm playing a video right here, you can see there's a playlist. And I'll just play that one. What happens is, as you can see when it's playing, I'm automatically muted. Look at my microphone right here. It's muted. So everybody can watch the same video at the same time without having anyone else interrupting. If you wanted to talk while the video is taking place, you have to click on push to talk. Now, when I'm pausing this, this is pausing for Elijah as well. So if you're a business owner, how can you use this? You can use it to train people. Let's say you have a product that you need to demonstrate, but you can't actually demonstrate it live with your camera. What you can do is record a YouTube video, play it to everybody on the Hangout, pause it, and ask them, do you have any questions? This is great for universities, training material, um, anything else that you need to discuss. It's also fun to just sit with your peers and watch a video together. You know how you usually send videos one another, and then you wait back, and it's like, LOL, that's funny. Here, you can actually see the response. You can do uh, market research, market testing with this. You put your commercial out there or your video out there, and you can see the responses on people's faces. If they're not laughing when you wanted them to laugh, something's wrong with the video. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, you can also create a playlist. So everybody can add their own videos to here. There are, there's a group of photographers on Google+. Plus. That's what they do. They get together on a Hangout. They play music while they work. So the Hangout is just in the background. They're working, but everybody adding their own YouTube video to listen to music. And then you can save your playlist for later use if you like it. So it's a great way to be introduced to music. And then finally, right here, you have Hangout Lower Third. Sometimes if you have meetings with your vendors, your companies, you have 10 people, you don't really know them. This is a great way to brand your Hangout. Sorry, right here. And this is a part now of the Hangout Toolbox. And so what it does, it basically puts a little banner. You turn it on. And let me go back to my to me. And you can see that I'm Ruben right now. It's in reverse because uh, it's mirrored, so the people who are watching it see it correctly. You will see it reverse. But you can put flags here. You can put a clock. You can brand yourself. You can put on the bottom uh, your URL. And this will be saved. On YouTube, if you're broadcasting, when you're uh, when this is recorded, this will be embedded in the broadcast. And then, of course, you have the Google Effects. If I can manage my finger. So, of course, if someone says something nice. And if you're introducing a guest, and if someone's boring you. <laughs> and of course, there are all kinds of, uh, this needs to track my face. So I don't know if it's going to work. Something. Sorry, my camera is here, right? So if it tracks my face, yeah. I was like, where are the effects? Let's randomize them. Maybe? No? It's too dark. Yeah, OK. Try it. Um, anyway, so Google Effects, my three-year-old loves it. <laughs> um, so that's it. So that's about Hangout. The, most, uh, the one that I love the most is the Google Drive, and Kate will dive into that. Do you have any questions about this right now? How do you start a Hangout? Go here. Download Chrome, yes. <laughs> OK, I'd like to do something. I would love to show you how it works on a mobile. Oh, did I do it? No? Sorry, I didn't mean to do it. I need your help. <laughs> Getting back to this. Okay, so that was made. 
So I see, I'm a little bit different there, but I see Hangouts as being the center of the Google universe. You can connect it to search, you can connect it to documents, to Drive, to YouTube, um, to the social era Google Plus, it's connected to your mobile, it's like the center, and it connects people. Rather than actually talking to them or texting to them, you see them face to face, and you can see the reaction. So it brings out like, your social interaction to a new level. So here are some innovative uses of Hangouts. As a business owner, you can use that to gather testimonials, basically uh, grab, grab your audience, grab your clients, your best clients, and on a, on a Hangout, and do it on air, and ask them why did they choose your business. And that's an immediate video testimonial for you on YouTube. It doesn't have to be long. It can be like 10 minutes. And you have it right there. So you know, usually you have very expensive video productions. You can host focus groups like we just talked about. You can teach and learn. You can launch a product, and I think Mazda did that. One of the one of the car companies launched their product in uh, the, car, the new car commercial before the Super Bowl on a hangout. They had hiccups, but you know. <laughs> you can interview uh, VIP if there's anyone in your industry that you want to talk to. Um, I, that's what I do every week. You're welcome to join me. You can hold discussions. Um, you can go behind the scenes, and this is really cool. Like if you have a business and people don't know how you operate, sometimes it's really cool to come back and just see how do you do stuff. So you can give that to your to your customers, and of course, customer support face to face. It's really awesome. So 2012 was the beginning of Google Hangouts, and this is what it looked like. Like, I really want to hear. Oh, oh, my oh, 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 So I predict 2013 will be the year of the Hangouts, not just the year of the video. And I really encourage you guys to jump on it if you're not already, because if you don't, your competition will. And if you need any help, that's what we're here for. Uh, before I finish, let's just talk numbers. Alex Madojan is an internet marketer. He made, you know him? <laughs> awesome guy, really great guy. He, uh, he made a million dollars in 27 minutes, so he kind of knows what he's doing online. He saved $24,000 a year switching from WebEx to Hangouts. Uh, my friend Paul Ramson is a hypnotist. He started doing Hangouts. He doesn't get a lot of people into Hangouts yet, but he noticed that since he started doing that, he doubled his subscribers on YouTube. So what's the value of a subscriber to you? Travel like uh, Elizabeth talked about can get to almost $90,000 a year if you have six employees who are traveling. There's a study saying that one out of three people, uh, employees, missing child's birthdays and important family occasions because they have to fly on meetings. And sometimes the meeting is just a face-to-face -face interaction. You can do all that with Hangouts. So to cut down that cost, people started doing teleconferencing. And that cost also starts at like $90,000 going down to half the second year. You can see like that graph where it does and Google Hangouts are free. So jump on that. And then for you guys, like Elizabeth was saying, your own time, your own money, your own health, what will you do if you stay at home? How happier will you be? And I, I, you know, my, my passion is that I believe that because you connect on Google Plus uh, based on passion and you connect with people and the relationship is so deep, it makes you happier 
and that happiness will ripple, like the ripple effect. And so that's my goal, <laughs> make a world happy, happy world. So this is very overview, very high level. There is a free five lesson course over two weeks. It's not very um, long or deep, but it will give you insights of how do you start uh, Hangout from Gmail, how do you integrate it with your calendar, and all the other stuff you can do with it. And of course, if you need me, I'm available. Thank you, Eva. Give her a hand. There's a, I want to introduce Eric uh, Lieberman. He's going to come up. We're going to talk about Google Apps for Business. But before we go into that, just a couple of things. Um, you know, you did a really great job of explaining some of the benefits of Google Plus Hangout, the marketing benefits, the internal communication benefits. I'm going to tell you a quick story about a bike shop owner in Portland who started using Hangouts last year when they first started, and a lot of people didn't even know what Hangouts were. He decided, he came up with an idea where uh, once a week, he was going to do a hangout with his customers, and he promoted it to the customers as they came in and on the social media. He was going to teach them how to fix something on their bike once a week, and he was just going to go out there and do it. Sometimes people showed up, sometimes people didn't. But eventually, he started to grow a following um, locally in his local uh, community in Portland, as well as nationally. And Locally, if you sit on a hangout with uh, a bike shop owner once a week, and he fixes, helps you fix that one thing on your bike for free <laughs> that you immediately fix for forever, next time you need to buy a bike park, who's the first guy that you're going to think of? Well, the end of the story, and actually it's still going, he's, this guy is still utilizing Google Plus. He ended up, because he had developed um, you know, a, a following much larger than just in the community of Portland, he started obviously logical next step in online um, parks. Uh, website and, and uh, e-store, and, and he's had a lot of success. And so that's just one example of an external way to utilize Hangouts. You know, Elizabeth talked a lot about using Hangouts for internal communication, and Eric and I are going to go over briefly using the Google Apps for Business and the really powerful collaboration and productivity that they are. So thank you, Yifat. One second. Hey, Ruben, how can you show all screens on here? All screens? Yeah, because it's over here. Chrome. Yeah, so what, where is it that you, what, what are you trying to show? I know. You, want, you can mirror it. You can, you can mirror this way. Yeah, how do I do that? Didn't you put my presentation on Chrome? I did. Uh, oh, it's over here. I think. Um, okay, so let me just pull it up real quick. Yeah. One second, guys. It's right there in the back. Kevin. So while we wait for this to get started, I want to introduce Kevin from Jason's Deli, who's been kind enough to bring some delicious food for us, which we'll be enjoying after uh, after you get uh, you have to listen to me talk for about 10 to 15 minutes. So um, did you want to stay, stand up and, and talk a little bit about the delicious food that he's got for us behind the uh, the wall there? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot here. Uh, thank you guys for Come up! Come up! Come up! Come up! I just got a call from the delivery driver. So uh, we have some great box lunches for you guys. Uh, we have five different types. We have vegetarian for those who want that. Thank you guys for letting us be a part of this. I'm the IT guy and I'm the sales guy, so I'm sending you guys a pitch. <laughs> we have fantastic food and uh, last minute orders for your large or small uh, groups. Give us a call. Um, we're also supporting the work from home initiative. I'm a big fan of what uh, Ruben's promoting and I'm glad to be a part of it. I'm also a huge fan of Google Plus for Google Apps users as well. And we use Google Plus at Jason Deli all the time. It's the safest time to run. So another chicken or add to the list. But thank you guys. In fact. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> okay, we're going to talk a little bit now about Google Apps for Business and how uh, you can work the way you live. Remember the clickers over there, too. 
So how many of you, before we get started, uh, use Gmail in, for your personal email? Show of hands. Love it. I'm so happy. How many of you use Google Apps for Business uh, at work? Okay, a good amount of you. So I think one of the reasons, I'm a huge Gmail cheerleader, fan girl, as I ever like to call it. And you know, one of the reasons that we love Gmail is that you can use it on your computer, on your laptop. I'm seeing tons of laptops, I've seen tablets, cell phones, we've got it all. You can access it from all those devices at, at home, right? So your productive life or your personal life is extremely productive, right? You can work from anywhere or you know, send family pictures and funny cat videos. Uh, but at work, you know, a lot of times many companies are using uh, devices and systems that aren't as mobile and don't allow you to work the way you do personally. And so we call this the consumerization of IT that in your consumer life, you want to have those same productivity benefits that you do uh, in your work. Can I just say, so you guys hear me all right? Yep. Cool. So my name is Eric. Um, I work on KP in our business development team for Google Apps. Uh, the, consumer, the consumerization of IT is a pretty fascinating trend that we're seeing, you know, regardless of what companies you guys are fans of or not fans of. Um, I personally, I think back to when I was in school and you know, I was working say in elementary school on a book report. And I remember using my, my mom's business level uh, Microsoft Office account to do so many cooler things than you know our, our personal home accounts would do. Um, and this is changing. So part of it is because of the, the digital advertising world, the profit incentives of, of what can be done on the web for free. Um, and it's pretty amazing. So these tools are you know, plotted on a, on a graph. Um, they're kind of outpacing what, what you're paying a lot of money for uh, in the business world. And um, it's, it's a pretty incredible trend, um, and, and you know, it's a big part of what Google Apps for Business is. So we'll get into that a little bit more uh, coming up next. So again, just like you know, Eric was saying, you know, looking at some of these this aspects of your personal life and transferring those to uh, your business life, the actually the paradigm is shifting in business as well. You know, by 2016, according to Gartner, 50% of global 1,000 businesses are going to be storing customer sensitive data in that public cloud. You know, that's uh, something that you can imagine is, is quite secure for those top companies to be to be storing that information there. You know, like I said, you've got laptops and. Uh, Tablets and phones galore just in this room, and it's the same in our in our own daily lives. So 40% of us are now owning a smartphone, and that even seems low to me. Um, and then finally, you know, I know you know you talk a lot about Gen X and Gen Y, and you know the different different types of benefits that are important to those groups. Um, you know, maybe things like vacation and things like that aren't quite as important. And options to telecommute. Use your use a smartphone. Um, have a, a shiny new laptop that you can work from anywhere with. Those are the things that are becoming more important and will help you keep your customers happy. Or I'm sorry, keep your employees happy and also help you recruit uh, great employees. And so the, this concept of cloud, do you guys are familiar with this? I know it's kind of like Santa Claus. It's a big thing that we're talking about. <laughs> a lot of different things. It's a pretty simple concept. Um, the cloud is something that the market is pushing us toward, not just because of efficiency gains, not just because of you know, cost savings, but because we live in a world of, of big data. We live in a world where you know, if you're on the web and every second that you're on the web, every click, every interaction that you have is being tracked. Um, and if you're missing the opportunity to analyze that data, you're missing an opportunity for a sale of a shoe or, or for booking a vacation or, or a flight or something. Um, so we're collecting so much data in this world that the cost of storing all that stuff and analyzing all that stuff on your own personal on-premise infrastructure would be astronomical, especially, and I know a lot of you guys are, are smaller businesses, this is something that you know, is a big barrier for entry. So the cloud evens the playing field for the big corporate guys, the financial services firm that have multi-million dollar um, you know, infrastructures and the small guys who have a really good idea and need um, that similar scalable cost-effective infrastructure. So cloud is something that, that is a pretty amazing thing and, and really, like I said, levels the playing field in this world. So you told him Santa Claus does not exist? It doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> or he. In the cloud. In the cloud. 
So when we think about IT in the past, business IT in the past, you know, it, the presentation here is in black and white. It's a little uh, spooky, but you know, it really is amazing for what it, for what it needed. You know, past business IT it needed people to be productive um, during an eight to five, nine to five day from a physical office at a physical desk with one device, where they come to work, they work on that device, and then they go home. It's completely different today. Today, you know, like Elizabeth was talking about, people want to work from on any team with their own internal team, with clients, being able to collaborate on documents and things. Any time, just because someone goes home at 5.30 in San Francisco, that does not mean that you know, the work stops in another time zone. Um, any place, huge. You know, that any place has really big implications, health implications, environment, environmental implications, you know, general happiness implications. And then finally, on, on multiple devices. You know, different devices are better for different aspects of life. You know, you may want to work from one device while you're in your office and another one while you are at home. So tablet, phone, all of those devices. And this all comes down to the concept that you can work the way you live. Again, going back to what you have in your house and working at that speed, being able to store all that data and having that same speed of productivity at work. Better web for business, Google Ask. So the, the core products here, many of you are, are familiar with using them in your personal life and some of you in your, uh, in your business as well. We've got Gmail, uh, Google Drive, Google Vault. Some of you may or may not be familiar with that. Um, it's a, a business solution for archiving, retention, and e-discovery for your Google Apps, Calendar, and, uh, and then obviously as we talked about, Google Plus. Yeah, just uh, before the next slide, is, we'll, we'll delve into it a little bit. I think a lot of you guys are very familiar <laughs> with or actually first on spot show you have an awesome <laughs> Of course, the Googler presentation has to have the most technical difficulty. <laughs> All right, cool. So this is just a screenshot of, of uh, what we see with Gmail for Google Apps. I appreciate you guys to share the same mic. Is this not working? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Fine, we'll share. <laughs> we do it like at a ton. Cool. So, so this is a screen. Oh, this is a lot better. I hear it too. Um, <laughs> uh, so. A lot of you have used Gmail. It sounds like a lot of you uh, have the room also use Google Apps for business. You'll notice not a lot of differences. This is kind of um, just a way that, that Google does things. We feel the change management for corporations is easier if the tools look and feel um, a lot like they do in the consumer space. Um, and you know, again, back to consumer, consumerization of IT, and these tools are pretty spectacular um, as they are in the free version. Some of the differences of these enterprise versions, um, we're talking about massive inboxes. We're talking about 25 gigabyte inboxes per user. Um, I've been at Google for about a year and a half, and I think I've used about 5% of, of my storage quota of email. Um, as you can also see, maybe you can't see it here, but you know, if you think about Gmail as being the at gmail.com domain, 
for Google Apps for Business, you know, it's, it's your own uh, corporate domain. So that in this case, altrastrad.com. Uh, and it also has this customization and corporate branding, so you can make it look and feel uh, however you want. Um, a lot of things are happening here in, in this one screenshot. You see, um, for example, this social layer of, of Jeep with you know, previous interactions that they've had, chats, um, posts on Google Plus. Um, you can see, you can even from this message go right, if you click on this uh, green bubble there, you can go right to a chat and be, what it does is it refers to that email that you're talking about. So, you know, I used to think about in business, you know, to get a question answered, even if it's a tiny question, um, what you have to do is send an email phone call, maybe save all of your questions at the end of the day to do a recap. In this, it's instantaneous. I mean, if someone is, is at the computer has a minute, just you know, shoot them a G-chat and get that question answered. It's, it's pretty incredible. And you can also jump right into one of those Google Hangouts. You can do a Google Voice call. You can click to call a cell phone. Um, there's a lot you can do with this you know, simple human interface. And of course, there's the powerful search capabilities um, that Google known for as a search engine. So you know, people with Outlook, for example, get bogged down in making sure everything is perfectly organized in folders. Uh, but with Gmail, you know, even if it's not organized, even if you just said everything, just has a running list in chronological order, the search is so good that just type someone's name, type something that you think might have been in the email address, and it usually has the colors of it. Uh, so this is, this is Gmail for business. The calendar piece uh, is pretty spectacular also. I mean, calendaring is a pretty simple concept, and it should be easy and intuitive uh, and work very easily. It should be across the device. You should have it on your tablet, have it on your mobile device, and all those pieces are there. Um, some other cool things about it, again, we have search. Um, we have calendar overlays, so you can see you know, if Kate and I want to have a meeting, I can just pull up Kate's calendar. She you know, has nothing to hide. She has a public and everything that says exactly what she's doing all the time. I can just book time on her calendar, you know. So a lot of times people have to email back and forth and say, well, it's 2 p.m. work. No, not 2 p.m. How about 3 p.m.? Well, no, maybe 3.30. And you go back and forth, you waste so much time just trying to find a time that works. With this, you know, assuming Kate's calendar is up to date, I look at her calendar, I find a 30-minute slot, I create the meeting, add her to the meeting, add a Google Hangout, you know, put an agenda in the meeting, and, you know, it's there. She gets in her email, she can accept, she can suggest a different time. This all, you know, these matter of seconds or minutes that are saved with these simple things, you know, amount to hours in a week, and, you know, tens of hours in a month, and, and a significant time for productivity losses. So this is Google Calendar. Um, Google Drive, if you guys are familiar with Google Docs, I'm sure you guys have all used Google Docs. So Google Drive is, is kind of this a rebranded Google Docs. So you still have your, your spreadsheets, you still have your presentations, word processing. But what you also have on top of that is kind of like a Dropbox or Box.net um, file storage and file sharing capability as well. Um, so what that means uh, in this context is first of all, you know, all the videos that you've seen, the real-time collaboration, you know, 10 people, 20 people being the document at a time. Sometimes you actually even just want this one person who knows this topic really well to look at this one paragraph. You can highlight that one paragraph, I don't know if you guys know this, and just do in the comment section plus in their email address, and they'll get an email and it will refer them to that exact paragraph saying, you know, can you work on this? The spreadsheets, you can even lock down the spreadsheet to only certain tabs or certain cells, so that you know if you work for hours on you know, some cost analysis or something, and you don't want someone to just come in and be able to screw everything up, you can just give them access to some you know one line item or two line items, and in that way, um, you know, you have that protection against losing your hard work and also still getting the values of that real-time collaboration. The next piece, and this is related to Google Drive as well, and when I talk about the Dropbox, uh, box.net type functionality, you can now store, I think it's up to 25 different file types in Google Drive. So what that means is you get that same user-to-user -user sharing capability, um, but you also get the powerful search, you get scalability and storing anywhere between five gigabytes and five terabytes of data on Google Drive. You get access from your mobile device, editing capabilities on your mobile device. Um, and one cool thing is, where you should be impressed by this, the search uh, 
uh, capability is so powerful that we will drive that. You know, suppose you're doing expensive work and uh, you're looking for that dinner that you've had at, at you know, Johnny's Pizza or something, and all you have is you scan like 30 receipts from the trip. And instead of clicking on each one and looking for Johnny's Pizza, you can actually search Johnny's Pizza and with the image recognition, you can look at Johnny's Pizza in one of those PDFs or JPEGs, and it, it works really, really well. So, Again, we talk about productivity game, we talk about seamless technology, um, we talk about you know, working from anywhere, access from any device. Google Drive is a pretty awesome tool. And then finally, the Google Plus case. Um, you know, we saw a really cool presentation about how you can use Google Hangouts. You can also think about Google Plus as just a social layer, a social backbone on top of all Google products. So everything, I mean, if you guys have seen this, this trend in the last year with Google, um, Gmail, YouTube, everything has a social layer. Everything has an identity. Um, and what this allows you to do is, rather than having all these dispersed pieces of you know, Google Drive and all the Gmail interactions and any chats that you've had, now it's all just one unified system. It saves you a lot of time when you're looking for some interaction. Um, and it, you know, it's really helpful when you're trying to, um, you know, in, a, in a meeting, for example, figure out next steps, you have all the pieces there. You see this Google Plus Hangout where these five individuals are working on this uh, Google Doc in this Hangout. So they're all looking at each other, talking to each other, and editing simultaneously. Pretty awesome. And finally, the mobility fleet piece, which we've touched on. Um, all of these tools are native applications on iOS, on Android. Um, they work great, they're really fast. Constantly updating uh, the, the UIs. And the last piece that I want to close on, just again talking about Google, the speed and velocity of innovation of Google. When we make a change to Gmail, when we make a change to Google Drive, that change is pushed immediately to, to you guys. And what you'll see in, in Gmail, for example, when you log on, is we've changed this thing. Here's what we've done. Take a tutorial of what we've done, and then you can say, keep it or leave it. And this is a different thing for, for business compared to, you know, for example, the three-year um, product releases of, of Windows or, or Microsoft Office, where you buy a product and it's obsolete a week later because you need to wait three weeks or three years rather for the next best thing. Um, whereas at Google, we have the best, the, the greatest, the fastest now. You get it now, and we keep iterating on it, making it better. Um, and that's just kind of how Google is. So. Yeah, this is Google Apps for Business. I welcome in no welcome any questions. These are some of the businesses that have done done Google over five million, ranging from especially Jason Stelly. <laughs> <laughs> ranging from five employees to you know, two hundred thousand employees. Um, yeah. So what's the price point? So the price point is fifty dollars per user per year, and that's for everything. That's for Drive. That's for Gmail. That's for Calendar. That's for GChat. That's for Hangouts. That's for Google Plus. Internally, YouTube. So. so I noticed the Hangouts can only add up to 10 people. What if you want to have 30 people? Well, so actually, we upped it. I don't know if we upped it to 15 people currently. In um, for apps. Yeah, in apps. In apps. Hangouts. Sorry, yeah. Um, and uh, the important thing is uh, with Hangouts on Air, for example, you can limit that. If you're the Hangout expert, you can limit that to you know a certain domain or a certain group so that just they are seeing this broadcast. You know, so currently you can't have 30 separate users in a Hangout, but that doesn't mean you can't open up a Hangout for 30 people. To view. To view. Oh. If it's a meeting or a So 15 participants, unlimited viewers. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Earlier you mentioned about uh, Google Drive and Store Documents. So is this Snap Vault? And Vault? Yeah. Well, Vault is, is uh, an archiving and you discover. You, you, you think of Vault as kind of like protections against legal holds or something. So um, if you need, if you're in an industry like a highly regulated industry like healthcare or financial services, or you need a record of all communications, all chats, all emails, um, what Vault allows you to do is it saves a copy of all of these emails historically for all of these users. And suppose you know this person um, committed some terrible crime or is suing the company for X, Y, or Z. What Vault allows you to do is search all of these emails for line items, for specific communications, and quickly, you know, because the process of these these legal holds is, is can take years and years to, to do all the things that are, are required of you. And with Vault, 
and you can search with the pure storage capability of storing terabytes and terabytes of data, um, you're able to archive and, and call it e-discovery those pieces that are most pertinent to a case or um, some sort of legal uh, interaction. So, thank you, Andrew. So, you have the Dropbox solution that you described. Um, they're similar. So, Dropbox is a, I think you're asking, Dropbox is a different company. Yeah. But, but they are, they are synonymous, I guess you could say. You are also on the Yep. You, there's also on Drive, um, there's a native app for, for uh, mobile devices and tablets. There's um, a local desktop client for your computer. So if you use Dropbox, you know, for example, you can have a folder on your Mac or on your PC called, you know, Expansion Ports or something. And that folder that lives on your computer, can you can put different files into it. And when you get an internet connection, it automatically pushes and pulls and updates that web application of Google Drive as well. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say something about plus one? The, the concept of plus one in Google Drive? It's something about uh, a referral network. I came across it just yesterday. So the, the plus one is uh, something that's integrated on Google Plus and also in Google Search, many of you may have seen, and actually also on websites, where in, within Search you can click plus one, you can plus one something on Google Plus, you can also plus one something um, on websites. And so that's, like you said, it's a really excellent referral network that shows you other things that your friends and family and people that you're connected with have plus one in the moment you need it. So let's say someone, you know, your uncle went and took a trip to Spain six months ago to get this really awesome hotel and plus one didn't maybe wrote a review, you may not know that he went to Spain. So when it comes time for your trip to Spain, how are you going to know who to ask for uh, for advice? So if you're searching for hotels in Spain and the one comes to the top of the search that he plus that he plus one and gave his vote of confidence, that's going to be the referral that you needed at the moment that you, or his referral when you need it. And so that's sort of an overview of the plus one button. So, so plus one shows up in Google search. It shows up in a variety of places. So yes, in Google search, on any you can anybody can install the plus one button. I do recommend that you install the plus one button on your website. If you just search add plus one button on Google, it'll take you right there. You just drop a tiny piece of code on your site and it'll add the plus one button. And then also it's it's heavily integrated into Google Plus as well. Cool. Well, if you guys have any other questions, um, like I said, Cody's Google Plus team will be out available for questions. Eric and I will be out available for questions. But without further ado, um, Ruben, did you have any final comments before we release for sandwiches? Oh, Stephen. Hi, I'm Stephen Mobile. I'm one of the tour organizers. Uh, thank you for coming out. And definitely thank you for Cool and Jason Stelly for uh, providing a venue and, and lunch. Um, you know, I wanted to talk uh, just briefly. I know you're all hungry, and I certainly don't want to see any food. Um, but uh, I basically wanted to kind of share some history a little bit about Social Good Center uh, and where we all fit and where we come as well. Um, so, Ruben and I just kind of uh, gave all caution to the wind. We knew Austin would be a really good city. We had a lot of uh, activists, social entrepreneurs who just knew that this city was right. Um, when Mashable uh, asked us to get involved in the host of the event. Uh, the Work From Home program was something that came out of a breakaway session, and uh, we're a community-driven group. The, the Work From Home program uh, came out of ideas that the community uh, sourced and voted on, and it's something that um, you know, we're, we're not a nonprofit. We have no ambition of being a nonprofit. Um, I think uh, a big part of our success is the ideas that come out of what we're doing. It's all uh, community. So your engagement is really important. So uh, on the Work for Home program uh, on February 8th, we ask that you interact with us through our social media accounts, through Google Plus, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, show us the pictures of you in your favorite pajamas in the Work for Home, and uh, tag, tag the companies you work for. Uh, in the Hashtag SGS Austin. Hashtag SGS Austin. And so, uh, you know, as we as we go from uh, February 8th into March 10th, um, we will be announcing very soon a whole day of events. And we have a lot of 
uh, external groups that we're working with, and, and we have a lot of very interesting people. So uh, follow us on, on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and, and you'll learn more. Um, if you're not already on our um, mailing list, at the bottom of our homepage, which is socialfoodsummitaustin.org, there is a sign up form. So you can sign up there um, and then and you can find out uh, in the open registration forms how, how you can get involved. And um, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, you enjoy the food and I hope you learned something and get really nice. So um, just so everyone knows, we're trying to get as many people signed up to participate in the work home program. If you go to that website, summit Austin, that will you can click on get involved. You can sign up as an individual, or if you're a representative of your company, sign up there, we'll then contact you, uh, ask you to fill out a couple of questions, surveys, so we can actually make this report that we want to uh, have uh, at our South by event. Um, so make sure you do that because the more data we collect, the more data we can turn it in back to you and actually create that snowball effect. That's very critical. Um, finally, for lunch, uh, lunch is outside. Uh, make sure you don't trip over anything. It's around the corner. Um, of course, everyone knows how to do uh, the school line and all of that. Um, so we'll go there and get the box lunches. And if you, if you want to come back here and eat, you can as well. So thank you very much for coming. And we look forward to your support in the next coming weeks.